And stop writing. Training. Not for me. So hell, don't do this to me again. Wait, I already told you I'm going back up north this weekend. What about the match? Do you want a lift? I'm driving up to Bradford. Um, when are you leaving? Now. Are you going home to see your parents? That's right. Whereabouts do they live? It's fine, you can drop me off from town centre. Have you got any brothers or sisters? One of each. Older or younger? Younger. You ask a lot of questions. I've thought of another. Okay. Why are all your friends? Why? What the fuck happened to you? Got jumped, didn't we? Rafiq! Who was it? Who'd you think? Did you do anything to provoke him? Fuck off, they're waiting for us at the gate. Clean yourself up, Mum will have a fit. I hate this fucking country. No, you don't. Those people aren't this country, they're scum. He's better off here. Not some drafty waiting room for hours. I'm a medical student, Mum, not a doctor. He should be in casualty. <laughs> You're yeah, right, maybe Mum couldn't sew him up when she's done with the shirts, sis. Everything's a joke with you, isn't it? How many times does your brother have to get beaten up by the BMP before you think we should do something about it? What's going on here? Uh, Raf got into a bit of a fight, Abu. <laughs> I've always been into you. He's getting ready for his wedding, isn't he? All right? Yeah. You all right, Imran? When did you turn into an Arab, man? I'm wearing my traditional dress, bro. So should you. Isn't this your traditional dress? I could have sworn you grew up with us not some fucking ghetto in Gaza. Come on, take it easy, bro. Come on, he looks like a fucking prick. Easy, yeah? Where's your brother, such a wanker? <laughs> wanker? Unwise. Very, very unwise. Yeah? Yeah. You got a friend in your room after 11 o'clock. One word from me and you get grounded. Sit down and shut up, so. So how's it going, Saps? You organised any exciting demos lately? Hmm? Managed to change the world yet? We're still waiting. You know what? I'm going to leave you to it, Naz, because your brother seems to be in total asshole mode tonight. Why, sir? Do you remember something I said? <laughs> it was as if I spat on the ground or something. You look ridiculous in the middle of Bradford. Things have changed, so. Since these new laws, the police are all over us. We can't joke about stuff like that anymore. 
If the police are detaining people illegally, get a lawyer and use the law to stop them, not your bloody demos. Or dressing up like Arabs and blowing up London. That's why you're studying law? No, I'm studying law so I can get out of this dump and have a life that isn't just prayers and selling chapatis. You're turning into such a Brit, big brother. I am a Brit. I was born here, so are you. You sound like you're proud of it. Why shouldn't I be proud of my country? What's London doing to you? Because it's a police state, because we're Bush's poodle, because we're slaughtering Muslims all over the world. Well, then get out the ghetto and get involved. Do what I do. And that's intelligent Muslims are just the shot in the arm this country needs. My earliest memories of them bricking our windows and throwing shit through our letterbox. Last thing I want to be is British. Anyway, I thought you couldn't stand your course. It's fine. You need to start living your own dreams, so not that. No, I haven't seen it. I'm really bad. I've not seen it. I think someone's saving a place for you. <coughs> Grounds for allowing the Secretary of State to make a control order. He requires reasonable grounds for suspecting that the individual is or has been involved in terrorism-related activity. Reasonable grounds for suspecting. It's a very low threshold, almost unparalleled in British law. All the more important, then, to have a robust avenue of appeal. What does the Act provide? Anyone? Whether there's a decision by the Court of Appeal to quash a control order, this does not prevent the Secretary of State from making a new control order to the same or similar effect, or from relying on the same matters for the purpose of making that new order. So? So hey? So basically, you can re-arrest the guy based on the same evidence, even if the Court of Appeal says the detention is illegal. Christ. Exactly. Not surprising, then, that most of the legal profession is up in arms about this. Yeah, right, but we're only talking about an extreme case, right? They'd only do something that drastic if they had a really good reason. <laughs> Let's hope you're right. You said you were going to come in for a coffee. Yeah, but it's late. Well, she says we don't have to do anything. Just come in for a bit. I'll see you in the morning. I'm Joy. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. This is for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you go through? Cheers. 
What do you think about current British foreign policy? Honestly? Of course. I think the truth is it's quite hard to be a Muslim in Britain today. Why is that? Because our country seems to be fighting a war against Islam all over the world. The government would say it's necessary to prevent terrorist attacks here in the UK. You don't agree? Not really. If I'm honest, I think that's a smokescreen to hide their real objectives. Which are? To control the world's oil reserves. Would you describe yourself as anti-American? No, certainly not. It's their policies I've got a problem with, not the country itself. I share a flat with an American. I guess, like him, I'm looking forward to a change of president. Are any members of your immediate family anti-American? It's better to be completely open, sure. if you can. <clears throat> um, my sister probably holds more extreme views than I do, but I wouldn't describe her as anti-American, no. How would you describe your sexuality? Um, heterosexual. Not bisexual? No. Are you sexually active? No. I have, I have been, but I'm not at the moment. No. How many sexual partners have you had? How would you define sexual partner? Someone with whom you've enjoyed penetrative sexual intercourse. I'm not sure enjoy was always the right word. Are you sure you want to do this? If it's important to you, I'll give it a go. In the Quran, there is something called a covenant of security. Very simply, it states that no Muslim can take military action against a country that gives him sanctuary. Many Imams tell us that this means no British Muslim can ever take action on British soil. My friends, this is not so. It's true that the Quran provides a covenant of security. If you flee from persecution, then of course you should not strike at the country that takes you in. But the law says nothing, nothing at all, about people born in a country. For Muslims born in Britain, who didn't ask to be born here, there is absolutely no covenant of security, no prohibition against military action of any kind. <laughs> For someone born in this country to contemplate military action here, and of course I am not encouraging such action, <laughs> I would have to tell him, as a Muslim scholar, that there is nothing in our holy teachings that would make his action un-Islamic. I have no problem with the people of this country, but if someone wants to attack them, I have no problem with that either. Oh, Lord, a crap. How can you agree to do that? Do what? Sit behind a screen like some bloody servant. How can any self-respecting woman do that? It's because of respect that they ask us to sit there. Oh, bollocks. Laptop, a bunch of pig-ignorant morons. Oh, all wearing robes, because what, does God find English clothes offensive? 
Look good, you're not wearing a headscarf. She has the devil's walked in amongst us. Calm down, Sir Hill. You're overreacting. I'm overreacting. Half those pricks were ready to strap up Semtex. Yeah, well, it's easy for you to keep your English cool. But maybe if you'd grown up in the Middle East like he did. If your sister had been raped, your mother tortured, your father murdered. Maybe you'd feel a little bit differently about Go it. Go to Palestine, Shaz. I guarantee you you'll find more English people standing in front of bulldozers to protect Palestinian homes than Muslims. More whites marched against the Iraq war than Muslims. I know, because I was there. Were you? If people don't like it here, they can leave. You see if they like it better in Pakistan, which happens to be a military dictatorship, by the way. What are you doing? Where have you been? What do you mean? Don't give me that. What are you up to? Hey, relax. I was just reading the meat here. Oh, bollocks. Show us your pass. Toothbrush. It's small and portable. Every home has one, but you need to get right into the heart of the house to find it. <laughs> Thanks. It's all part of the service. The family you visited during your recent surveillance exercise? Yes. They were a Muslim family. Yes. How did you feel about that? Do you mean, did I object to it? 
Well, I guess I was wondering whether or not I was getting special treatment or whether all the recruits were burgling Muslim homes. Well, if I told you that most of the families that were currently under surveillance were Muslim, would that trouble you? None, not if the intelligence that identified them was sound. Sounder than at Forest Gate, for example. Why do you want to work for MI5, Mr. Wade? Because I suppose I think there ought to be more to life than just a fat paycheck. And also because I want to give something back. Um, my parents came to this country. They had nothing. Britain took them in, fed them, housed them. I owe this country everything. If it wasn't for Britain, I wouldn't exist. In my book, that's a debt of honor, and I intend to repay it. A lot of your friends wouldn't agree with you. But I'm not them. Job interview. Right. Didn't know many law firms around here. Yeah, they're all over. Do you guys want a coffee? Oh. Yeah. Okay. This is Jude, by the way. Hi. Hi. This isn't how I expected to spend tonight. Well, it's return the hospitality for our sister students from North <laughs> and brother students. He is going to totally flip. Which is why he's not going to. Ever. I really like him so. Please. Come on, stupid, it's me. You and Nasima met up in London? That's right. Spends more time on the picket line than in lectures. I don't know how she thinks she's ever going to qualify as a doctor. Did you tell him? No. I bumped into the seam as she was on her way out of St. Thomas's. She and Sabi were checking out the job opportunities, comparing with leads. Smart thing to do. Actually, I've been having to think about my options for next year as well. What options? You've been studying for the bar for three years. What are you talking about? I don't feel ready to join in enough court yet. I'm going to take a little longer to consider. I've enrolled in a postgraduate course at LSE. What? I think it's a good idea, Abu. It makes you more employable in the long run, not less. Morning, John. Morning. And uh, you'll be in here. This is you. Oh, I think you know our test. Hi. Hi. Not sure I recognize you without the uniform. 
Tess has kindly agreed to guide you through your in-house training. You're my mentor. Afraid so. You know, I didn't imagine it like this at all. Did you think there'd be dark corners and exposed pipework? <laughs> A1's in the basement. That's gadget, basically. And then there's A4, mobile surveillance. The only ones you need to worry about are A1A and A2A. They didn't tell you any of this, did they? They didn't tell me anything. <laughs> Classic. A1A is the burglars. But you'll be leaving that to the experts from now on. And this is A2A. Telephone taps. I mean, all the bugs are rooted into the building. I thought that was done at GCHQ. No, we do the domestic stuff in-house. Hey, what's going on with you? No one has any In Dewsbury. Who is the British suicide bomber? He is a second generation Pakistani. Almost certainly. He is educated, possibly highly educated. Born here, reared here. iPod owning, Man United supporting. In many ways, culturally indistinguishable from you and me. He has experienced racism in his youth. Now he's a man. He's frustrated that jobs for which his training and abilities clearly equip him remain out of reach. He's confused about his identity. Neither at home in the land of his fathers nor properly accepted as British here. He's tempted by the wealth and material comfort the West has to offer, but racked with guilt as a result of that temptation. Just continuing to live here feels like a betrayal. A betrayal compounded by the war he watches us conducting against his brothers all over the Islamic world. He feels powerless, angry, impotent. Above all, he is seeking, seeking a community of the faithful, a band of brothers which represent purity, integrity, and a return to honor. Seeking a cause which will allow him to recover his dignity and escape the dreary reality of his daily life. And now he thinks he's found that cause. Jihad. Study him. This is your enemy. <clears throat> Thank you, Richard. 7th of July, 2005. 52 people are killed and 700 injured when Mohammed Sadiq Khan and his team explode bombs in four locations around London. The next day, 16 further unexploded bombs are found in the boot of Shizad Tanweer's car. Plastic bottles with felt roofing nails fixed to the outside, tips pointing outwards, designed to rip through flesh. Deadly. It had been left in the car park at Luton Station on the morning of the bombings with a seven-day parking ticket. Why? Who was supposed to collect those bombs? That's the question that just about every person in this department is currently trying to answer. Is there a third team out there? Primed to attack in July, withdrawn at the last moment for reasons unknown, ready to attack again at a time of their choosing. Not surprisingly, most of the contacts around the known bombers have gone cold, but we have had one stroke of luck. In March 2004, we foiled an attempt to explode a lorry bomb in the heart of London. The investigation was known as Operation Crevice. 
The press reported that the ingredients for a half-ton fertilizer bomb were found in a lockup in Hanwell. And what they didn't know and therefore couldn't report was that the team behind the attack had been under surveillance for weeks. Somewhere buried away in all those mobile phone intercepts was one call. Missed at the time, it has to be said, to the ringleader of the lorry bomb conspiracy from one Muhammad Sadiq Khan. This is the network of the Operation Crevice Bombers. Now, I'm convinced that somewhere in this network lies the third team. And I'm sure I don't have to explain to you why it is absolutely essential that we find them before they're given fresh targets and reactivated. That's it. I'll see you all on Monday. How are you getting on with your cover story? Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm keeping the student thing going for a while. And beyond that, I haven't given it much thought, to be honest. You should. You're going home this weekend, aren't you? You're well informed. Where have you been, Sahel? Sorry? I'm your girlfriend. Where have you been? I've been trying to get hold of you. I was in lectures. What, all day? I rang. Why didn't you pick up? There's no signal down there. No. No? No. Well, one day she'll be down there with you and she'll notice you've got a signal, or she'll ring you while you're down there and you'll pick up. You must have a cover story worked out for every eventuality. Practice till no one can see the cracks. Not even your girlfriend. Well, actually, that won't really be a problem because I don't have a girlfriend currently. Well, you should get one. You need a convincing private life. A man with no life arouses suspicion. Do you have a girlfriend? I mean, boyfriend? Of course. Hello. Hi, thanks for getting back. No, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Guys, you know what? I'm going to catch you later. Yeah? I'll call you. Hi. Hi. What is it, Sal? I just was wondering whether you're heading up to Bradford tomorrow. Why? Is it like the age of If I grab a lift back tomorrow. I've got a bloody cheat, you know that. What is it? It's my dress. I thought maybe you could come round tomorrow before we leave and meet my parents. Are you winding me up? Of course not. I can't just turn up at your house unescorted. Your father would think I was a total slut. It's not like that. He really wants to meet you. I want you to come. I'm just gonna grab something from my room. I'll be down in a minute. Who are you? What do you mean, who am I? This is my bedroom. Come downstairs. I'll explain. They've been here since Thursday. We weren't allowed to mention it on the telephone, otherwise I would have told you. Who are they watching? Oh, for God's sake. Is him running then? Yes, I think so. Why did Dad agree? <laughs> what was he supposed to do? They came to the shop. You should have said no. Imran Sabi's brother, for God's sake. How can he say no, huh? 
It's the law. Anyway, Sabia's already arrested. Thank you, Mrs. Wahid. That was really great. You're welcome. Uh, would you like the top up? Lovely. That before you just took me a bit by surprise. No problem, man. Sorry about the mess. Do you mind if I get some stuff? Go ahead. So, um, how much longer do you think you're going to be here? A couple more days. Hopefully, not much longer. What is he supposed to have done? I'm afraid that's not something we can talk about, sir. What's he been up to? What makes you think he's been up to anything? Just because it's a bunch of coppers in your bedroom. Hey, Naz, I'll stop. She's really down. That's hard to her because they can't find him run. Maybe you should cool it a bit with her while all this shit's going down. <laughs> oh, you have no idea, do you? You just open your mouth and let the crap flow out of it. Naz. She's on a control order. She's not allowed to see me or any of her friends or they send her back to prison. So I've got no choice but to cool it with her, have I? That's not Go what I Go fuck yourself, Sahil. Hey, no, 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 listen. No. You're stepping in from here, right? What advantage have you got over your opponent? Get yourself into a stronger position. Step in, yeah? Step in. Right, now do it again. That's it. Oh, hell. You should have broken your fall. No pain, no gain. Get on with it. No pain, no gain. I'm going to try that line on me. <laughs> Never going to get into that girl's knickers, man. Just admit it. Oh, yeah. Coming from the great expert on women. Oi, tight. Stop pissing about, OK? Take it seriously or get off the map. Sorry. What's going on with him, right? What do you mean? My bedroom's full of coppers watching his house. And no one knows where he is. What's going on? You've got to be careful, bro. Keep your voice down, yeah? You're fucking stupid. We're okay in the club. You can't say that. You can't trust anyone now. The cops are paid out for information. They've had him under surveillance for ages. But they're wasting their time. Where's he gone? Back home. It's a train. Bullshit. Imran. It's my cousin Sahil. I know what I'm talking about. From Jude. Yeah. Look, Naz, I'm really sorry. She's my best friend. I can't just abandon her. Of course you can't. Not that anything I do makes fuck all difference. Sab's still under curfew, and I'm still hiding in a garden with a house full of fucking coppers. There's a better way. Right, about what? I thought you said you hadn't seen him. I haven't. You're going to be focusing on one of our most promising new contacts. He's known as Omar. His number appears in the link analysis of Operation Crevice contacts, as well as in a set of numbers we're in the process of recovering from another source. Can't you tell me what that is? Well, she can tell you, but she can't tell me. Oh, sorry. Don't be. It's for her own protection. Surveillance officers operate in the field, and they prefer not to hold too much information on how their targets are acquired. Yeah, obviously. No one expects you to know this stuff yet. Claire, why don't you take Sahel through it? 
His mobile's already covered. What about his home? How do you mean? Well, do you think we should cover it? You're asking me? Absolutely. You're the desk officer in charge. Um, yeah, I think we should. OK. Normally, we'd introduce a fault on his home phone line. Many reports that we fit the bug when we ran there carrying out the repair. Happy with that, then? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Good. Unfortunately, doing anything like this requires a massive amount of paperwork. So you'll need to apply for a warrant to bug under the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000. Here's the form, and here is the act. You'll also need to apply for a warrant to allow us to enter the House under the Intelligence Services Act 1994. And you need to make sure that the operation you're asking Claire to carry out complies with our Code of Practice on Surveillance. Otherwise, the Intelligence Commission will come down and like a ton of bricks. Here's his latest annual report. Welcome to the wonderful world of intelligence. But you can't fart without filling out a form. How long have you known him? All my life. We were at school together. And he's a member of your martial arts club? That's right. Uh, we're both part-time instructors there. Has he ever mentioned Omar to you? Omar is uh, Matloub Mahmoud Hussain, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I mean, they've got the same surname, but that's pretty common around us, and he's never mentioned a relative called Matloub to me before. Uh, we've spoken about his cousin Imran Iqbal, but that's only because he's my neighbor. Iqbal's your neighbor? Yeah, that's right. He's uh, under surveillance. Special branch using my bedroom to keep an eye on him. I assumed you knew. What else did Sajid say? Nothing. Um, he said the police are wasting their time because Imran's gone back to Pakistan. And um, he asked me to come around to his house and watch some videos from Iraq. What kind of videos? Did you watch them? No. Uh, listen, I know said like this, it all sounds very sinister, but you've got to understand where I come from. People watch these kind of videos all the time. Their relatives send them over or they get them off the internet. It's just a kind of low-level fight back. It doesn't mean they're terrorists. And the idea that Imran's gone to some Al-Qaeda training camp is just a joke. I mean, if you knew the guy, he's a grade-A prat. Obviously, as soon as I saw Sajid's name on the crevice net, I reported it. Yeah, you're probably right. Just because he appears in the link analysis. Doesn't necessarily mean he's involved. Perhaps you keep a watching brief. Report anything further that you hear. You remember the other source I mentioned for Omar? The one I couldn't discuss in front of Claire? Yep. Go down and see Dave Phipps in the basement. He'll walk you through it. Right. You OK? No, not really, no. Come through here. You think Horn was out of order? 
I just turned in one of my oldest mates and what did I get in return for it? A bollocking from Headmaster. No, I don't think that's very fair, no. Do you think you can continue? Yeah, I can continue, but this isn't easy. When Horn's asking me to keep an eye on Sajid, he's asking me to shit on my own doorstep. Right, that's a bit different from spotting his name on a screen and reporting it. And you wouldn't mind a little understanding of how difficult it is. Don't patronise me, Tess. I'm not. At least I didn't mean to. Right, you guys knew exactly what you were getting when you hired me. Somebody should have thought this through. Sorry. Uh, hey, Nas, what's up? Where are you? Uh, I'm in London. What's the matter? Sabia died. Suicide. Oh, God, Naz. Naz, why didn't you call me? I did. It went to voicemail. I need to see you, so can you come home? What's that noise? No, Naz. I can't talk right now. I'm going to be back in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Naz, you okay? I'm fine. Call you right back, okay? Sure. Everything okay? Um, a, a friend of my sister's died unexpectedly. Do you need somewhere to make a private call? No, no, no I'll call her back later. Sure? Yeah. Dave Phipps? Basement? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, it's Nasima. I can't get to the phone, so leave a message. And hey, there's this me. Call me back, all right? Oh, Bob. Here. Oh, you're honoured. This is the crown jewels. What is it? This is Mohammed Sadiq Khan's mobile phone. What's left of it? We recovered it from Sadiq's body. He kept hold of it. I am understanding me. It was embedded six inches inside his torso. The only reason it survived the blast. The explosion caused a localised electromagnetic pulse and most of the chip's circuitry was wiped. But we are beginning to make progress on the SIM card. Is that it? Mm. So Omar's mobile phone number was found on that, wasn't it? In the address book, not in the recent calls list. Could you do me a favour, please, if Sajid Hussain's number turns up in either list, here's his number. OK, I'll take a look. I'll tell Horn not to hold his breath. 400 desk officers in your department. They all want their pet hunches checked against this baby. What's that? Ah, uh, that, as far as we can tell, is the last text message sent by Mohammed Sadiq Khan before boarding the train. Does that say Ozama? Yeah, actually, we think it's Ozama. Right, you'll have to ask Corn. We just extract it. It's up to you guys to figure it out. Sorry about me. Sure. 
you were all over the place, bro, man. What happened? I got distracted. I was sadded. Don't know. Right, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go get coffee. Do you want anything? with a silver medal, Sohail Wahid. I'll need a hanger to this place, bro. <laughs> Keep it safe. Yeah, safe as you'll never see it again. <laughs> we text him. My sister, man, she keeps ignoring me. When am I going to meet this famous sister? Never at this rate. Give it back in, Nobby. No, because you only lose it down there in your student accommodation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who are those bunch of jokers you're talking to all the way through my fight session? Shit. What? Cops. What? Pull over, man. I am, man. Take it easy. Speeding. 80 miles per hour, okay? Sajid Hussain. Is this your vehicle? Yeah, it is. I have reason to believe you've been drinking. We're Muslims, man. We don't drink. I'm not talking to you. Mate, just okay. take it easy. Just take it easy. I know we have the right to make a call. You've been arrested under the Terrorism Act. You've no rights whatsoever. I thought it was drunk driving. Do you want to argue about it, you packy fuck? Hey, hey, you come this way, love. Come on. Hey, listen, I need to speak to you. Got me in about hours now. And I'm not your son, excuse me. Fuck off. We need to talk, mate. You're making a big mistake. You can do all the talking you want in here. Take the 
eyes off him, please. Thanks. You want us to go? Yes, please. Apology accepted. The branch had the jiu-jitsu competition down as a covert meet for jihadists. Seems people are being pulled in all over the Midlands. And we knew nothing about it. I'm sure someone somewhere did. You do realise this is the problem, don't you? You got innocent Muslims getting pulled over for no reason and then pinned up against the wall and being called a packy fuck by some racist piece of shit that should never be in a uniform in the first place. For fuck's sake, such a fucking cliche. This is exactly why people are getting radicalised, yeah? Next time you ask them some help, they can tell you to go and fuck yourself. I'm sorry, I got here as soon as I saw your name on the system. But what if I didn't have my own team, MI5 officers to come bail me out? What then? Still be banged up in there with me mates, shit. You'd better ask the branch to interview the others so they don't get suspicious. Sure. How did you get on, by the way? Take it you're not talking about the silver medal. It means nothing to me, but I'll get it checked out. You should stay close to them. Sometimes an arrest can spook a subject, force them to call a contact, move explosives. Right. Is that your girlfriend? Yeah, you told me to get one, remember? Shithole. Yeah, that shit hole. Just get me on the chair. You think you can trust him? Who's Sale? Yeah. What are you on about? I went to school with him. Yeah, but he, he lives in London. He could be an informant. Look, mate, if I can't trust him, I can't trust anyone, okay? You recognize the other voice? No, I don't. When was this surveillance started? After you told us what he said to you in the club about the video. And who authorised it? Horn. Right, I need to speak to him right now. Do MI5 want me as a desk officer or have I been recruited as a stooge? So how? I just want a straight answer. Was that arrest a set-up? Straight answer? No, wasn't. Look, you haven't been with us long, so you're not used to it. This is typical of one hand not knowing what the other's doing. Are you sure? Because I'm way out on a limb here. I'm fucking over people who trust me for you lot. I give you my word. Being arrested is an occupational hazard in this job. Although we rely on special branch for a lot of our legwork, relations are far from ideal. Look, you're exactly the kind of person we're desperate to recruit at the moment, Sir Hale. We're hardly gonna piss you away on a one-off peripheral investigation. And if you remember, it was you that originally drew Sajid to our attention. Yeah, as one of my oldest friends. Listen, if Sajid's a jihadist, what makes you so sure that I'm not? Maybe you've recruited a sleeper. Do you ever think about that? Sorry, it's my father. <laughs>